Okay, people, more still water goodness coming right at you. This is kind of a version of a, a seal bugger, but it's called a goat bugger because it's not tied out of seal, it's tied out of goat. So, um, this stuff's really, really cool if you haven't played with it. Um, I'll show you the, the color combo that I'm using for this. Uh, but first of all, it's it's basically just a, 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 a standard woolly bugger tie uh, with dubbing instead of chenille. So, that will make it easier to follow along. This is a 2x long streamer or nymph hook. This is a Daiichi 7, uh, 1710. And then I have a Firehole Stone in autumn color in uh, 3.5 millimeters. So what I'm going to do first of all is just add a little bit of lead or lead free wire to the hook shank mostly just so I can shove that up against the bead and keep it in place. For this one you can choose a thread color that's going to add a little bit of highlight behind the bead because there will be a small band of thread. Uh, for this one I'm kind of keeping it toned down. This is just Uni uh, 6 aught in Rust Brown. <clears throat> tail for this one I really like this stuff but it's a nature spirit premium bugger boo and if you look at it there's like almost a shine to these feathers this is called crawdad orange uh, they also have fish hunter marabou in UV crawdad orange that's pretty awesome so what I'm going to do is just peel off about half the fibers of this so I have them all in my hand and if I just pinch those together with my finger I can basically get a clump of marabou like that and I don't want the the tail to be even or anything I just want it to kind of be buggy like that so from here I'm going to trim off the the stem part and I want this to be a little bit longer than the hook shank, so I'm going to tie it in just like this. A little bit long, just like that. Whoa. I'm going to tame that down with some of my own spit. That's gross. Curtis has to touch this fly to take pictures of it, too. Okay, so I've just got some wire. This is small. I usually use brassy, but Curtis doesn't have any brassy size wire readily available, and small works just as well. So I'll tie in just a little bit of wire, and that's going to catch the hackle. Now for this dubbing, um, I took medium olive, and I mixed it with fluorescent orange. And that really has a, a cool kind of just dirty olive-ish look and it works really well with this orange coloration. So the trick here is to dub this dubbing on the thread just barely enough so that it sticks to the thread but not bound down too tight and that way when I pick it out it will pick out really nicely. And you can see it's it's kind of a thicker dubbing noodle. And this is the hardest part of this fly, is getting enough tension to actually get it to stick, because it's kind of a coarse fiber. So I'm just going to wrap that forward. It doesn't have to be even at all. Let me get just a little bit more. get that dubbed right up next to that bead. The reason I like this stuff is that they're fairly short fibers. They're about a half inch in length, maybe three quarters, and so when you wrap a hackle through it and brush it out, they, they pick out really nicely. Now you can use grizzly dyed olive or grizzly dyed uh, orange for this one, and I'll just use a grizzly dyed olive because it's what I brought. And this is a high and dry hackle 
Even though it says high and dry, it's still great for buggers. All right, so I'm going to tie this in so that the shiny side is facing forward. You can see how I kind of did that on the, that side. And then give it a couple loose wraps and then really crank down on that. The Uni 6 aught threads among the strongest of the, the 6 aughts that I've used. I really like it. So from here I'm going to make one full turn right behind the bead and then I'm going to really space out these wraps. Maybe not that far, but you're going to want just like four to five wraps. And what that does also, it angles your, your uh, fibers backward. So before I tie this off, I hold the hackle toward me and I move the wire away from me. So it's like that. So that way I can just come and hold that straight up, reach under and grab the wire and trap that down. Now, for maximum durability, do two wraps of wire right next to each other. And then I can grab this and just yank it and it will break right off. So now, as I come up through this hackle, I'll trap down a few fibers. It's not that big of a deal, but I'm just kind of wiggling that through. And we're, we're reinforced. Now I'm going to preen everything back with my fingers and give that a a little even head and rotate that wire and break it off and now I'll whip finish it so once I'm here I'm just going to take either velcro or a, a dubbing brush tool and come in here and start working on those fibers and pick them all out So you can see how those fibers really want to get teased out in those hackles. Keeps it pretty sparse. And that will create a lot of movement and, and create a lot of kind of reflection in the water. But anyway, uh, that is the goat bugger. I'm going to put a little bit of cement on it. I realize I haven't been doing that in the fly videos, but it's a critical step. to keep it off that matte colored bead but anyway that is the goat bugger don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel if you watch us all the time subscribe that way the very second we drop a video you can be the first one to like and comment and you can even say first as your comment the end